Okay, so what I'm going to do now that I've got this threaded up, I'm going to take off the rubber band. And that way I have everything ready to go and I don't have to worry about what's happening with my film coming loose. So this is tight now, so I was going to show you this and uh, we're going to talk about uh, where we're going to put this stuff. Uh, this is uh, how we're doing this on my uh, Universal Mark I. Um, first of all, this software is really, really good. We have a, a preview mode uh, before we actually start and you just click the preview box. Uh, we're doing Super 8 this morning. So, we're going to take a look. Okay, we see we need to scoot this over. So, scoot that over. Looks like we're good up and down. Now we'll shut it off. So now what, we're do, what we do is we uh, release the tension on this and then we pull this back to where we have the leader. Uh, by the way, for uh, anybody who has one of these uh, units, I found that uh, one of the things that uh, I've discovered is, is that uh, we have a lot of problems from time to time breaking this old film. So uh, they tell you to loop this over this top one here, like this one's looped over and through here threaded. Uh, I don't go to the very last one. I go underneath and then I go straight to here. I find that it helps keep the film from breaking. Uh, I haven't had a break of a film, even old film, 1943 I've done, okay? So now what we do is we, we uncheck that box of the preview and we go up here and we tell it we want to make a new album. And um, this particular album is, uh, we're doing a lot of film. This, uh, I'm doing uh, 18 rolls of film. This is uh, eight. So uh, this particular one uh, was done 1970. So we're going to set this for 1970. Then we're going to say OK. In order to get this going, you have to check this box. Double click that box and now you press start and it will start capturing. Okay, so we're capturing. So what I wanted to talk to you about is that this particular program is making an AVI file. So those of you who are making MP4 files, the, this AVI file is a really high definition and really high quality capture system. So the thing is, is that what I really like about this, there's lots of things that I like about this, but this program here, what we've got going on over here is we've got the frames that are actually running then we have the number of feet I love the number of feet because I charge people by the foot I don't charge them by the roll so the reason I started doing that is because I found that not any of these rolls however uh, somebody thinks they're doing so great uh, are not accurate for, so, I mean, if a 50-foot roll is not really 50 feet, why would you charge somebody for it? So, actually, this one, I can tell exactly what's happening, okay? So, right now, we're at 16 feet, and this roll will probably be 400 feet or something around there. Maybe it'll be over. Maybe it'll be under. We don't know. Uh, in the previous reels, let's just take this for an example, uh, we have, <clears throat> I always keep notes on everything that I do. So this one was 379, this was 414, this was 421, this one was only 200. So, you know, as we go along, here's 127, uh, 399, 
320, uh, 425, 400, 414. So you can see that it varies, and I'm taking that from this. Now this is capturing everything at 15 frames a second. So this is running almost true speed because this is Super 8. And uh, what you're seeing on the screen there is a Super 8 picture. Uh, the monitor here is a 43-inch monitor. Uh, this is a 1080p monitor. It's actually a television set that I happen to like the quality of the picture and the sound that actually comes off of it too uh, because I do run a lot of other stuff to correct it and uh, change the, uh, especially the grain. One of the things that we we'll always notice in these old films is the grain, the uh, video noise that's called, but the grain. So here's the thing. This is going to end up being a file size of probably somewhere around 170 to 180 gigabytes. So when you're running a file size that size like that, you need to have some good method to capture this and store it and be able to transfer it. So um, in my particular case, I'm using a, a five terabyte uh, drive, SSD drive inside my computer which is much more efficient than any outside. So when I take and do something like this, when I finish it down to an MP4, it will probably be um, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 1.2 to 1.4 gigabytes. When I transfer that to my drive, you won't even see a line go across to be able to know that you transferred it. It transfers it so fast that, it, that it's like a blink of an eye. So one of the things we need to realize is that there's a, a lot more efficient ways of doing things. Uh, I've been kind of blessed by having a, a young guy next door uh, named Chris who uh, is a computer guy, and also does um, all types of cell phones, uh, gaming consoles, gaming computers, uh, 22 years old, really, really sharp. He helps me a lot with the new technology of things and what we need to be aware of when we're doing that. And that's, that's why I'm talking to you today, because when we do these uh, and we finish them and we let's say we have an mp4 file uh, this is going to end up being 1440 by 1080 so the thing is is that what we need to realize is what the quality is when we put it to a device that we're going to play so if it's say DVD or a USB or a hard drive or you can also have Blu-ray and you can also have M-Disc. So the thing is, is that we need to know the structure and the quality of each one of those things. So the whole thing is, is if you're shooting this and capturing it and it's 1440 by 1080, if you put it onto a DVD, you're losing the quality of what you just did. So we don't want you to lose quality. So many people come in here, and I've got to tell you this, and we're going to stop this uh, right now because it's something that needs to stop. Uh, people say, oh, I don't want to put it onto a DVD or onto a Blu-ray because disc won't be anymore. And I'm telling them, hey, don't you believe that for a second. And I can tell you that one of the most prevalent things is, is if you watch PBS and they give you the perk for signing up with them and supporting them, they're giving you DVDs. And so the, the, the thing is, is that DVDs, M-Disc, Blu-rays are going to be here. They're not going to go away, especially on the M-Disc. 
So an M disc can be played anywhere on any kind of DVD player. So an M disc is good for a thousand years, and that's why it was invented. Uh, the government uh, made that so that they could archive their stuff to disc and not have it deteriorate and store it on a disc where it's really, really easy. I mean, it's a thin, thin little disc. So that's why today I'm telling you, don't let anybody fool you that DVD disc are not going to be around. It may not be a actual DVD because here's the thing that I'm going to get to. A DVD quality disc, if you look at the disc spec, it is 720 by 480. So 720 by 480 is not any comparison to your 1440 by 1080. So if you put that 1440 by 1080 onto a disc, you just lost the quality that you just shot for HD. So that's my main thing today. Don't get involved in putting your film to the wrong media. So I'm going to get into some other stuff uh, here about this in the near future with the videos. But this video today is about where do I put this 8mm film that I've produced. DVD or... So, have a good day. Don't let anybody tell you any different. DVD disc format is going to be here. Don't let anybody kid you. So have a good day. Happy film.